Welcome to Universal Light Christian Center, the city of light. Our founder and lead pastor is Reverend Gail Talbert Smith. ULCC is a radiant, multi-generational gathering of believers who are dedicated, demonstrative, and determined to spread light, love, and hope throughout the world. There's always something exciting happening at ULCC. Meet us on the prayer line Thursday, December 31st at 1150 p.m. as we pray in the new year together. We will be on the corporate prayer line Thursday, December 31st at 1150 p.m. And together we will welcome 2021 in prayer. And then join us Friday, January 1st at 3 o'clock p.m. for drive-in communion and worship. We will follow CDC social distance guidelines, but we invite you to join us in worship New Year's Day, January 1st at 3 o'clock p.m. on the parking lot, ULCC 3220 Napier Avenue for drive-in communion and worship. ULCC has always been a church that supports and participates in the arts. We encourage you to purchase a ticket to Stained Glass Beyond the Sanctuary, featuring our lead pastor, Pastor Gail Talbot-Smith, Minister Dominique Nichols, and Minister Tina Timms are all performing in this pr production. And we encourage you, purchase a ticket. Let's support the arts. Let's keep the arts viable during this pandemic. This is normally a show that we participate in in March, but it has been pushed to December, December 22nd through January 1st. You can purchase a ticket online and you will receive a link to enjoy the show in the comfort of your home. Stained Glass, Pilar Wilder, Hyia Dance Theater presents Stained Glass Beyond the Sanctuary, a virtual edition. It's a show you don't want to miss. You can contact the number for more information or you can purchase your tickets online. So let's support the arts and let's support our community during this pandemic. Stained Glass Beyond the Sanctuary, December 22nd through January 1st. ULCC Seniors Pastor would love to meet you on the prayer line every Wednesday from 12 to 12.30. This is a time to check in, spend time with Pastor in prayer and fellowship. Every Wednesday from 12 to 12.30 p.m., we are inviting our seniors. We love to call them the Incredibles of ULCC. Join Pastor on the prayer line for a time of fellowship and prayer this Wednesday from 12 to 12.30 p.m. We're celebrating some special people with special days in the month of December. Starting with Reverend Dominique Nichols, the 24th, Veronica Jackson, the 8th, Brooklyn Dinkins, the 12th, B. Harad, the 16th, Ladiah Jackson, the 16th, and closing out the month, Ben Ficklin, the 20th. We salute the Christ in each of you and we are glad you were born. We encourage you to participate in the following prayer opportunities throughout the week at ULCC. ULCC, it's time for our prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, God, for truly this is the day that you have made. 
God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God, for your anointing falling fresh on us this morning. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God, for what you're doing in every area of our lives as we begin to begin this day. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus for Universal Light Christian Center. And we thank you for the shepherd of this house, Reverend Gail Talbert Smith. God, we thank you that you will continue to enlarge her vision for, for this church, God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God, for sending people in, God, to help with the vision, God, that God has granted her for this church. Lord, we thank you and we praise you this morning, God, for your sweet spirit reigning and ruling and abiding in this place and on this service this morning. God, we thank you right now that as you release your anointing, God, that it will fall fresh on us this morning, God. Give us a fresh outlook on you and the things of your word, God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. God, we thank you right now. We trust your word this morning, God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God, for you and your precious blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins this morning morning God we thank you and we praise you God for, for the, the word of God that's coming forth we thank you God that it will nourish our hearts and in our minds this morning God we thank you and we praise you God for you just being God all by yourself we thank you God that we you look you sit high and you look low down on your people God and you've already granted us whatever we need before we ask and for that, we just say thank you. We just thank you, God, for you are all powerful and you are all knowing and all seeing, God. And we thank you, God, that you have provided everything that we needed for this day. We thank you and we give your name praise, honor, and glory, God, because there's none like you in all the earth, God. It is in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. And so it is. Please join us for our time of exhortation from Psalms 136 when we declare the greatness of our God and you respond for his mercy endured forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords. To him alone who doeth great wonders. To him that stretch out the earth above the waters. The sun to rule by day. The moon to rule by night. Who remembereth us in our lowest state. And has redeemed us from our enemies. Who giveth food to all flesh. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heavens. Good morning, and welcome to Universal Light Christian Center. Our celebration scripture is Isaiah 9, 2 through 7, from God's Word Translation. The people who walk in darkness will see a bright light. The light will shine on those who live in the land of death's shadow. You will expand the nation and increase its happiness. It will be happy in your presence like those who celebrate the harvest or rejoice when dividing loot. You will break the yoke that burdens them, the bar that is across their shoulders and the stick used by their oppressor, as you did in the battle against Midian. Every warrior's boot marching to the sound of battle and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel in the fire. A child will be born for us. A son will be given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and peace will have unlimited growth. He will establish David's throne and kingdom. He will uphold it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The Lord of Armies is determined to do this. Hallelujah. We have come to give the highest praise to our Lord, for he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. 
so we give him hallelujah you are alpha and omega you're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, I praise your name. I praise your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I praise, I praise your name. Your name. I, praise I praise your name. Your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. You are worthy, worthy of my praise. Sing hallelujah. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him right where you are. Come on, just put your hands together and let's just worship the Lord. Think about how good he's been, how faithful he's been, and let's worship him. Let's bless him. Lift your hands right where you are. Have a praise party right where you are for he is good. Hallelujah. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, I praise your name. I praise your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever.
bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Good morning. The last time that I was up here, I asked your, you the question and myself the question, what does tithing look like in a pandemic? And so I want to continue with that discussion of what tithing looks like during a pandemic. What it looks like in a pandemic for me is that it keeps the church lights open and on and the doors open and the building upkeep going. It meets the needs of the pastor and whatever she needs. Whatever she needs, it's there. And also in this pandemic, tithing looks like to me we still meet the needs of the community. We're still being able to do our outreach and all of our ministries. So that's what tithing looks like to me in a pandemic. But one most important thing is it helps me to keep my priorities straight and in order. Because if I make my tithes and offerings a priority, I know that God will provide and deliver. Because if you think about it, we don't own anything in this life. God provides for us and the amount that he allows us to keep, that's the amount that we are here to manage. So I thank God right now that he continues to open doors during this pandemic. I thank God that he continues to provide during this pandemic. I thank God that he continues to deliver during this pandemic. So I praise God for all of the blessings that have come my way during this pandemic of 2020 and he continues to be faithful and I cheerfully give back that portion that he has commanded me to give. So at this time, there are several ways that you can give this morning. They are both convenient and safe. You can text to ULCC Macon the dollar amount to 45777. You can also give through Cash App. Our, our Cash App name is Universal Light or you can just write a check and mail it to the church. We just thank God that you have set your priorities straight and that you are still paying your tithes and offerings for the upbuilding of the kingdom. We ask right now that you would read with me and you will see the words on the screen, our ULCCC time. It is our prayer and it is our dedication over our tithes and offerings and that we ask that God will bless it and increase it in a mighty way. So right now we ask that you read with me. I profess this day unto the Lord God that I have come into the inheritance which the Lord swore to give me. I am in the land which you have provided for me, the kingdom of Almighty God. I was a sinner serving Satan. He was my God, but I called upon the name of Jesus and you heard my cry and delivered me into the kingdom of your dear son. Jesus, as my Lord and my high priest, I bring the first fruits of my income and my offerings to you, and I worship the Lord my God with it. I rejoice in all the good which you have given to me and my household. I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God and have done according to all that he has commanded me. Now look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless me as you said in your word. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, and so it is. Now take whatever uh, electronic means that you're using to pay your tithes and offerings, or if you have an envelope, if you would just raise them up high, knowing as your praises go up, the blessings will surely come down. And we thank you, God, right now for the blood covering that is over these tithes and offerings and that it will be used for the upbuilding of the kingdom. And for everyone that has been faithful with, with their giving, God, we thank you that you are blessing them and providing for them right now in the name of Jesus. And so it is.
Around the time of Elizabeth's amazing pregnancy and John's birth, the emperor in Rome, Caesar Augustus, required everyone to participate in a massive census to register all the world's inhabitants. Everyone was traveling to be registered in his ancestral city. Mary's fiance Joseph from Nazareth in Galilee was a descendant of King David. So his ancestral city was Bethlehem, David's birthplace. Mary, who was now late in her pregnancy, accompanied Joseph. And while in Bethlehem, she went into labor and gave birth to her first son. She wrapped the baby in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the normal living quarters. Nearby in the fields outside of Bethlehem, a group of shepherds were taking turns watching their flock, guarding them from predators in the darkness of night. Suddenly an angel, a messenger of the Lord, stood in front of them and the darkness was replaced by a glorious light. It was the shining light of God's presence. The splendor of the Lord blazed so bright about them that it lit up the field with the clarity of God. And yes, they were terrified. But the messenger said, don't be afraid. Listen, I preach you a gospel of great joy, glorious news, news of amazing grace, news that will affect all people everywhere. I evangelize that most joyous news the world has ever heard, and it is for everyone, everywhere. For today in Bethlehem, the city of David, a rescuer has been born for you. A liberator has been born for you. He is the Lord, Yahweh, the Messiah, Jesus. He is the promised anointed one, the supreme authority. You will recognize him by this miracle. You will find this baby wrapped up and lying in the manger. And at that moment, in a flash, the heavenly messenger was joined by thousands of angelic soldiers and knights and singers, and the field was filled with a vast heavenly choir. And did they sing praise to God in the most perfect harmony? They sang, give glory to God in the highest heaven. Give glory to God in the highest heaven. Peace on earth, good will toward men to the highest heights of the universe. Give glory to God and on earth peace among all people who would bring pleasure to our Lord. And as soon as the heavenly messengers disappeared into heaven, the shepherds were buzzing about with conversation. They said, let us rush down to Bethlehem right now. Let's see what's happening. Let's experience what the Lord has told us about. So they ran into town and eventually they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. After they saw the precious baby, they spread the story of what they had experienced and what had been said to them about this child. Everyone who heard their story couldn't stop thinking about its meaning. Mary too pondered all of these things in her heart, treasuring each memory. Then the shepherds went back to work. They went back to the work of glorifying and praising God for everything that they had heard and seen, which happened just as they had been told. to be born in Bethlehem. And then, 
what? Those slippery magi sneaking across the border in all different directions. So yes, I got scared. I mean, concerned. And I gave the order to kill all males under the age of two. Oh, I'll admit it, I'll admit it. I was threatened by this baby. And let's face it, fear makes all of us do some strange things. If he was the Messiah, my days were numbered. Everybody knew I ruled by force. But if one came who had the power to win with love of all things, love, then I would definitely be forced off my throne and I just couldn't take that chance. I had to find him and destroy him. I had to use my power while it still worked to protect what was mine. Oh, don't you dare look at me like that. We all have our little kingdoms and dynasties, our families, jobs, and careers, and we do what we have to do to protect it. See, you all made such a sentimental steak about Christmas with your chestnuts and eggnog and office parties. Oh, please. You don't even realize the Christmas emerges, challenging your authority and your way of life. And now, you have to do one of two things. You either crucify him, or you serve him. Now I can finally tell my own story. I'm not looking for sympathy, but put yourself in my sandals for a moment. A priest without children? I can see it in the people's eyes, wondering if there was some secret sin that me and Elizabeth uh, made us bury. Looking at me as if I wasn't worthy are spiritual enough to be a priest? Then Gabriel <laughs> appears out of nowhere and said that God had heard my prayers. Now, I'm not sure what he heard. If I had long stopped praying for a child, no, my prayers were focused on winning the respect of the community. Never thought I'd be a part of that group. 
God knows I never wanted to be. But there I was, too old to do anything but make peace with the fact that I wasn't going to be as fortunate as the others. All of us, all of us felt disgraced. Like God was withholding his blessings from us. I knew what people were saying. That me and Zachariah were hypocrites. That we just didn't have enough faith. After all, there we were, priest and first lady, serving the Lord day and night, but barely. The very thought of it was more than I could say. But then, one day, God spoke to Zechariah and told him that I was going to have a baby. Lord, <laughs> imagine that. Finally, after all these years, huh, serving in the temple, the lot fell to me, and I, I was chosen to go into the Holy of Holies. Oh, this would be my moment of vindication. Now, I could show them that I deserve to be here. I could see it. Just see me coming out afterward with my face glowing like Moses. <laughs> I would raise my hand slowly, <laughs> like looking, or like parting the Red Sea, look into the eyes of the people and pronounce the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. I just got chills thinking about it. Zechariah was finally chosen to go into the Holy of Holies. He lit up like a light, strutting around, waving his hands, rehearsing some speech over and over until one day, he came home and couldn't say a word. His voice was completely gone. Now that was the real miracle. But he wrote down that the angel Gabriel told him that my old self was going to have a son and that my boy would be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from birth. I thought he had lost his mind along with his voice. But when Mary came to visit, while she was pregnant with Jesus, that boy of mine went to jumping and praising God right there in my womb. You see, all of us bearing wives, we received what we were promised. Our barrenness was a punishment. It was actually a sign to all of you who are waiting for unfulfilled promises and dreams. It was for everyone who has ever cried out to God. Give us children. Give us purpose. Give us what you promised or we will die. Well, uh, on behalf of Sarah, Rachel,
I wasn't even sure I wanted a son anymore. But in my silence, I realized that my petty desire for vindication, my inability to trust God, my anxieties about being respected, those weren't qualities I wanted to pass on to my son or any generation. Instead, I can prophesy to my son. Praise be to the exalted Lord God of Israel, for he has seen us through the eyes of grace. He has come as our hero God to set us free. He appears to us as an almighty savior, a trumpet of redemption from the house of David, his servant, just as he promised long ago by the words of his holy prophets. They prophesied he would come one day and save us from every one of our enemies and from the power of those who hate us. Now he has shown us the mercy he promised to our ancestors, for he remembered his holy covenant. He has rescued us from the power of our enemies. This fulfills the sacred oath he made with our father Abraham. Now we can boldly worship God with holy lives, living in purity as priests in his very presence every day. And to you I prophesy, my little son, you will be known as a prophet of the glorious God, or you will be a forerunner going before the face of the Master, Yahweh, to prepare hearts to embrace his ways. You will preach to his people the revelation of salvation life, the cancellation of all our sins to bring us back to God. The splendor, light of heaven's glorious sunrise mm, is about to break upon us in holy visitation, all because the merciful heart of our God is so very tender. The word from heaven will come to us with dazzling light to shine upon those who live in darkness, near death's dark shadow. And he will illuminate the path that leads to the way of peace.
you shed your blood for me, Jesus, on Calvary. Thank you for being born for me, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For loving me so. Never, never, never know. For loving me so. a city in the rural province of Galilee, the heavenly messenger Gabriel made another appearance. This time the messenger was sent by God to meet with a virgin named Mary, who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David himself. The messenger entered her home. Greetings, he says. You are favored and the Lord is with you among all women of the earth, you have been blessed. The heavenly messenger's word baffled Mary, and she wondered what type of greeting was this? The messenger said, Mary, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. Listen, you are going to become pregnant. You will have a son, and you must name him Yeshua. Savior, Jesus. Jesus will become the greatest among all men. He will be known as the Son of the highest God. God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he will reign over the covenant family of Jacob forever. But Mary said, but I've never been with a man. How can this be possible? The angel said, Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Most High will overshadow you. That's why this holy child will be known as not just your son, but also the Son of God. It sounds impossible, but listen to this. You know your cousin Elizabeth, right? Elizabeth, the one listed among the barren women, far too old to be a mother, yet she has become pregnant and will have a son in three months. So Mary, the impossible is possible with God. Mary, deciding in her heart, said, Here I am. I am the Lord's humble servant. I belong to you, Lord, mind, body, and soul. As you have said, let it be done to me. And the heavenly messenger was gone. And Mary immediately got up and hurried to the hill country in the province of Judah, where her cousins Zachariah and Elizabeth lived. When Mary entered their home, she was greeted by Elizabeth, who felt the baby leap in her womb. Elizabeth was immediately filled with the Holy Ghost. And she began shouting, you are blessed, Mary, blessed among all women, and the child you bear is blessed with you. And blessed am I as well that the mother of my Lord has come to me. And as soon as I heard your voice, Mary, my baby leaped for joy within me. How fortunate you are, Mary, for you have believed that what the Lord told you would be fulfilled. Mary, you have believed that the impossible is possible with God. Mary was so deeply moved by these amazing encounters, first the messenger and then her cousin Elizabeth, she could not contain her response within normal prose. Her soul, her noble soul began to wax poetic and speaking to the spiritual, social, and political revolution, this great reversal of history without scroll or quill. From the depths of her soul she sung, my soul, my soul lifts up the Lord. My spirit celebrates God, my liberator. For thou, O oh Lord, I am your humble servant, 
and you have noticed me. For imagine it, from now on, all generations will call me little Uncle Mary, will call me blessed. The one who can do all things has done great things for me. The mighty one who has worked a mighty miracle has worked a miracle for me. Holy, holy is his name. From generation to generation to generation, God's loving kindness endures for those who revere him. Ah, God's arm has accomplished these mighty deeds. The proud in mind and heart, God has sent away in disarray. God's arm has accomplished mighty deeds. The rulers from their high positions of power, God has brought down low. And those who were humble and lonely, God has elevated with dignity. The rulers, the hungry, God has filled with fine wine and food, the rich God has dismissed with nothing in their hands. To Israel, God's servant, God has given help. He has remembered to be kind just as he said he would to our fathers long ago. He promised to be kind to Abraham and to his children's children forever and forever. To God be the glory, glorious God on high, peace on earth and goodwill to all.
יברכך אדוני וישמרך. יאר אדוני פניו אליך ויחונקה. יישא אדוני פניו אליך וישם לך שלום. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We hope that you have been uplifted and enlightened through our worship celebration this morning, and we are confident that you will never be the same again. To know more about us, visit our website, ulccmacon.org. Thank you for worshiping with Universal Light Christian Center, the City of Light. <laughs>